In this lesson, we're going to be looking at word problems that can be modeled with a quadratic function. And we're going to be maximizing or minimizing those functions. What you know about a parabola is that a parabola either has a maximum point if the parabola opens downward, or a minimum point if the parabola opens upward. Knowing that, let's take a look at example one. Given that y is equal to 6x minus x squared, for what values of x is y equal to 5? So we're going to simply take the equation and replace the y with 5, and then solve for x. So we're going to want all of our terms on one side of the equation. So I'll add x squared, subtract 6x, and leave the 5 on the left side where it is. That way we'll have an x squared term that has a positive coefficient. Then this can be factored, x minus 1 times x minus 5. And that's going to give us two solutions, x equals 1 or x equals 5. There are two values of x for which x for which the y value is 5. All right, let's take a look at a second part. For what value of x is y maximum? Well, this is going to occur at the vertex of the parabola. And we know that our vertex occurs when x is equal to negative b over 2a. And if we put our quadratic function in standard form, it will be y is equal to negative 1x squared plus 6x plus 0. So a is negative 1, b is 6, and c is 0. So x is equal to negative 6 over 2 times negative 1, which is equal to positive 3. So x equals 3 is the first answer to the question. That's the value of x for which the y value is maximum. Now we want to know the maximum value of y. And as you know from uh, studying quadratic functions before, if we know the x value, we can simply use the equation to find the y value. So y is equal to 6 times the x value, 3, minus the x value squared. So that's going to give us 18 minus 9 is 9. And so the y value is equal to 9 is the maximum value that y has for that quadratic function. All right, now let's take a look at some, fun some examples in context. A flare is launched into the air, the height of the flare above the ground, given by the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 96t, where h is measured in feet and t is the number of seconds since the flare was launched. We're first asked when the flare will reach its maximum height, and then what is its maximum height? So we know that since this is a quadratic function, that the maximum is going to occur when t is equal to negative b over 2a or negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. And that's going to give us negative 96 divided by negative 32, which is 3. And so that's going to occur at t equals 3 seconds. That's 3 seconds after the launch. And then to find the maximum height, we're going to simply take that t value and replace it in our quadratic function. Now we get negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3. And we can certainly use our calculator for that. But I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Uh, 270 plus 18 is 288. And so that gives us a maximum height of 240 feet. And that's the answer to part two of the question. So when does the maximum occur? Three seconds after launch. What is the maximum height? 240 feet. Then in part B, we are asked after how many seconds will the remnants of the flare return to the ground? So when a, the uh, flare returns to the ground, we know that that corresponds to a height of 0. So we're going to simply take the equation and replace the h value which, with 0, and then solve for the time. And this is one that we can factor, that we can take a GCF of negative 16 times t. And then that'll leave us with t minus 6. And so if we set our two factors equal to 0, either negative 16 times t is equal to 0, which gives us t equals 0, or 
t minus 6 is equal to 0, which gives us t is equal to 6. Now, it's asking after how many seconds will it return to the ground. So that's going to be our t equals 6 seconds. That will be the answer to the question. The t equals 0 represents the fact that the flare was originally on the ground at the starting time of t equals 0. Now let's sketch a graph, and we're going to label all of those key points. So sketching a graph, this will be a first quadrant graph, where t is our horizontal variable and h is our vertical variable. And what we have noted is that our flare started on the ground, so at t equals 0, the flare's height was 0. And at t equals 6, the height was also 0. That's when it returned to the ground. In the middle of that, at t equals 3, the flare reached a maximum height of 240 feet. So that's the vertex of this parabola. And you kind of see what the, uh, the context is here. The flare went up and then came back down. And that kind of makes sense of our quadratic function. All right, let's take a look at another example. A ball is thrown upward from the top of a building with an initial velocity of 32 feet per second. Just a quick uh, second about that. Um, that 32 feet per second is represented in the function. It's not something that we need to do anything about. Um, it's just that that initial velocity is, is that coefficient of t in our function that we're given. So our height function is the one that's given there. h is measured in feet, and t is the time after the ball was thrown measured in seconds. What is the maximum height? When does this occur? When is the easier thing to start with? We know that our when occurs when time is equal to negative b over 2a, and that will be negative 32 divided by 2 times negative 16, and that will give us a t value of 1. So that maximum height occurs at time equals 1 second after the ball was thrown. Our maximum height we can find by replacing t with 1. So negative 16 times 1 squared plus 32 times 1 plus 48. And that's going to give us, uh, let's see, that's, that's 80 minus 16 is 64. So the maximum height is 64 feet when t equals 1 second. And that is the both of the answers to the question, maximum height and when it occurs. Next part, when does the ball reach the ground? We know that when a ball is on the ground, that corresponds to a height of 0. So we're just going to simply take our equation and replace the h value with 0. And then if we have this in standard form, perhaps we can factor. What you'll notice in this particular function is that everybody is divisible by 16. So let's take everybody and divide by negative 16. 0 divided by negative 16 is 0. The first term in the quadratic divided by negative 16 is just t squared. Second term divided by negative 16 is minus 2t. And the third term divided by negative 16 is minus 3. That's going to make it a little bit easier to factor. And that'll give us t minus 3 times t plus 1. That'll give us solutions of t equals 3 seconds or t equals negative 1 second. Negative 1 represents a time before the actual launch. That's not the answer that we're actually looking for. Uh, so t equals 3 seconds is the, the answer that we are looking for. That's a time after launch. t equals negative 1 doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. All right, let's take a look at another word problem. An auto dealership sells 35 cars per month when the markup over factory price is $3,000. Note that markup is the profit that the dealership makes on each car. Um, that's the difference between what they buy the car for and what they sell it for. Marketing research indicates that for each $200 decrease in the markup, the dealership can expect to sell an additional five cars per month. What markup will maximize the total monthly profit? What is the maximum total monthly profit? Okay, we have some linear functions here. And uh, what we can note about these is that uh, the markup over the factory price is $3,000. But we're going to make $200 decreases in that markup. So if we make one $200 decrease, we're going to subtract 200. 
two $200 decreases, we'd be subtracting twice as much as that, or 400, and so on. So we're going to be subtracting uh, 200 times x from each of the markups. So think of x as the number of $200 decreases in the markup. All right, now um, the number of cars that they sell uh, was initially uh, 35 cars per month, but for each two of those $200 markups, we can expect to sell five more cars. So if I have one $200 markup, we're going to add another five cars. If I have two $200 decreases in the markup, we're going to add 10 or two times that amount. So we're going to add five times X that amount to the number of cars sold. Uh, the total monthly profit is equal to the markup on each car. That's how much money they make per car times the number of cars. This is kind of like our rate times time equals distance kind of a formula. So let's think of it as profit is P is the function, and that's equal to our markup 3,000 minus 200 times X times 35 plus 5 times X. Okay, let's take and put that uh, profit function in standard form. Let's multiply out, and if we multiply carefully here, we'll notice that that x squared term is going to come from the product of negative 200x and 5x. So that will give us negative 1000x squared. And then our x terms are going to come from our inners and our outers. And so that's 5 times 3000 is uh, 15,000x. And then 200 times 35 is minus 7,000x. And then our last term, or the constant term, is going to come from the product of the first, 3,000 times 35. So that's going to be uh, plus 1050000. So putting that in standard form, we have negative 1,000x squared and then minus, and let's see, that's going to be 5500x plus uh, 105,000. Now, what were we being asked? We are trying to maximize that profit. So we know that the maximum profit occurs at x equals negative b over 2a for any quadratic function. And so that's going to be 5500 is the opposite of our b value divided by 2 times negative uh, 1,000. Sorry, we're going to back up just a minute. I made an arithmetic mistake, and we're going to correct that. So we're going to back up a couple steps. And we're going to correct that arithmetic mistake. And that arithmetic mistake was when we were calculating the outer product. That's actually 15,000. Okay, that's going to change our middle term. So P is equal to negative 1,000x squared plus 8,000x plus 105,000. So we know that the maximum is going to occur at the vertex, which is at x equals negative b over 2a, which will be negative 8,000 divided by 2 times negative 1,000, which is equal to 4. And so we have four $200 decreases in the markup. So what markup will maximize the total monthly profit? That's going to be a markup of... 3,000 minus 200 times 4, or 3,000 minus 800 is uh, $2,200. So that's the answer to part one of the question. And the answer to part two is 
what is the maximum monthly profit. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take that 2200 and we're going to plug it into our profit function. So that would give us negative 1000 times 2200 squared plus 8000 times 2200 plus 105,000. And we surely want our calculator for that. So let's plug in there and grab a scratch pad. So we have negative 1,000 times 2,200 squared plus 8,000 times 2,200 plus, and then our last term was 105,000. And that's giving us a negative profit, which is not correct. Sorry, bear with me here. Of course, $2,200 was the markup that maximizes the profit, but what I neglected to think about, and this is something that you need to put on your radar as well, is that that's not the value of X. The value of X that makes a maximum profit was four. So I'm going to change those values that we plugged into the function. We're going to plug in the X value of four. So at that negative 1,000 times four squared plus 8,000 times 4 plus 105,000. Let's go back and edit that calculation. So I'm just going to replace all those 2200s with 4. Maybe it would have been quicker just to retype the calculation. And that's going to give us a maximum profit of 121,000. So $121,000 is the maximum profit to be had, and that's the second answer to that question. All right, let's take a look at some rectangle problems. These will be fun. A gardener is digging a rectangular uh, garden and putting a wire fence around the edge to keep the animals from eating his plants. He has only 20 feet of fencing, but he'd like to maximize the area of the garden. So we're going to sketch some diagrams here. Uh, we're going to sketch a diagram for a garden that has a width of two feet. So if we have a rectangular garden that has a width of two, that takes care of two of our sides, we've used up four feet of fencing now. So what's that going to leave us? That leaves us with 16 feet of fencing from our 20 feet that we had to use. So 16 divided by two gives us a length of eight feet. So if the width is two feet, the length is eight feet. Now let's see what if he makes his garden wider. So if he makes the garden wider, then he's going to use a width of three feet. Now we've used up a total of six feet. That leaves us with 12 feet left over from the 20 feet. 20 minus six is 12. Sorry, 20 minus six is 14. And that's going to make our lengths seven feet a piece, right? Because we've got to divide that remaining 14 feet of fencing by two lengths. Now, what do you notice? Our length and our width in both cases add up to 10 feet. So if the width of the garden is x feet, we can we could say that 2 times the width plus 2 times the length has to equal the perimeter of 20, which means that the width plus the length has to equal a total of 10, which means that the length is 10 minus the width or in our case, our length is 10 minus x. That's what we're after here. Whatever the width is, the length has to be 10 minus that amount. And so what that's going to allow us to do is to write an area function. Area is the length times the width, which would be x times 10 minus x. All right. Now we're going to find the vertex of the graph of the function a of x and sketch a graph. So um, if we put a in standard form, I'm going to distribute that x, and we get negative x squared plus 10x. And I'm going to put a plus 0 on the end for the c value. Our maximum occurs at x equals negative b over 2a, or negative 10 over 2 times negative 1 is 5. And for some of you, may, we may find other ways to find that vertex, right? Because if we have the, the original equation in factored form, you don't have to put it in standard form to find the vertex. Some of you may find it easier to use 
uh, the con a consistent method throughout. All right, so what we're going to do is now find the y value or the area value for that x value. So the area is negative 5 squared plus 10 times 5, and that's going to be negative 25 plus 50 is 25. So if we sketch a graph of the area function versus x, when x is 0, the area is 0. When x is 10, the area is also 0. When x is 5, right in the middle of those two values, the area is maximum 25. And so we have a nice uh, quadratic function there with a maximum uh, value of 25 when x is equal to 5. So what is the maximum area of the garden? That's our maximum area, which is 25 square feet. So in this case, the maximum occurs when the width and the length are equal because our width is x, which is 5, and our length is 10 minus x, which would be 10 minus 5, or 5 feet also. So in general, if you're trying to maximize the area for a rectangle with a given perimeter, that maximum area is going to occur when the rectangle is a square. All right, let's take a look at another more involved problem. This one we have three adjacent rectangular corrals. And so that what that means is we have a big rectangle, but we're also putting in partitions here in the middle. So we actually have four widths, and then we have two lengths. So write an expression for the length of the fenced-in region in terms of x. So we have 200 feet, 200 feet of fencing or 200 feet of perimeter to use here. And we have two lengths, and we have four widths that have to add up to the 200 feet of fencing. You'll notice that everybody here is divisible by 2. So let's divide by 2. L plus 2x is equal to 100. And that means that the length is 100 minus 2x. So there's the length in terms of x. Now we're going to write a function for the area in terms of x. Area is equal to x times 100 minus 2x. And that will suffice. Or if you wish, you can put that in standard form by distributing negative 2x squared plus 100x. And then we can answer the question, does the area function have a maximum or a minimum? Well, if we look at that lead coefficient, that lead coefficient of negative 2 means that our parabola will open downward. If a parabola opens downward, that means that the parabola is going to have a maximum value. So we're going to have something that looks like this, where the parabola is going to have a maximum value. So that means the area has a maximum value. And that is because a, the first coefficient, is equal to a negative number. So the parabola opens down. All right, so now we're going to look for the dimensions that produce maximum area. Well, we have our standard form uh, area function above, and we know that the maximum will occur at x equals negative b divided by 2a. So that will be negative 100 divided by 2 times negative 2. And that's going to give us negative 100 divided by negative 4 is 25. And so our dimensions are our width and our length. So our width is equal to x, which is 25 feet. And our length is equal to 100 minus 2 times x, which is 100 minus 2 times 25. And that's going to give us 50 feet. So our dimensions that produce maximum area would be 50 feet by 25 feet. That's one of the answers. And then we're looking for the maximum value for the area. In order to find that, we might want to plug into that factored form. Remember, that was the factored form of the area function. And if we replace x here with 25, because that's the value of x that produces the maximum area, 
you'll notice here that we're actually getting, oops, replace the x's with 25. And you'll notice that we're actually getting 25 times 50, which is the width times the length. And that's going to give us 1,250 square feet is the maximum area of said pen. And that's it for the lesson.